Hi, everyone. Welcome to Enabling Motion, the podcast where we share inspiring technology that keeps people moving. This is our first ever episode. Thank you for being here. We're a new podcast on the Podpire Network. I'm Sibel Mufti. I have a background in biomedical engineering, and I've interned on the DARPA arm. Today, I'm going to be talking about Rome Robotics uh, knee exoskeletons, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Herview. I have a background in neurobiology and will be sharing with you today a very exciting piece of tech where haptic feedback is being integrated into bionic hands. And rounding out our PO trio uh, is Owen McIntosh. Um, my background is in biomedical and mechanical engineering. And I'm going to be talking about a counterbalance tail that's coming out of Japan that might help your grandma stay on her feet. Stay with us. We'll be right back after we go to these ads to pay for our tuition. How often have you been told by a middle-aged man to lift with your knees? I know that my co-host and I have heard it a million times. And jokes aside, the benefits of supporting our body's largest joint are countless. That's why today we're sharing with you two robotic exoskeleton devices from Rome Robotics in San Francisco that are designed to enhance knee performance and health. First, we have the Forge exoskeleton, which is a pneumatic device using compressed air to provide additional strength to the user's knee function. Aimed to both protect and enhance the ability of first responders, this device has been shown to impressively double strength and endurance while cutting the g-forces experienced by the knees in half. The Forge has a backpack, which houses the battery and air compressor, and the actual exoskeleton is attached at three points to both legs, specifically on the thigh, the upper calf, and lower calf, just above the ankle. The brace runs between these attachments on the outside of the legs, with a joint by the knee with a large air bladder filled with compressed gas partially surrounding it, providing more power to the knee. A powerful example of where this would be useful is that firefighters often need an extra crew member just to carry gear if they're climbing a large number of stairs. This device removes the need for that extra personnel. It makes it easier to carry a person out of harm's way while preventing dangerous fatigue. Additionally, this could be deployed for manual labor with lots of heavy lifting. Wire did a great video review on their YouTube channel. Definitely check it out. I am just imagining some sort of firefighter superhero. <laughs> Fireman, Fireman <laughs> carries twice as much gear with half the G-Force. Um, Wait, so the the superhero's name is just it's just Fireman, Fireman. Yeah, like it's Fireman. like yeah, Fireman. Of you know that's what they're called, of right? Course. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyways, now Rome Robotics' second device with a more medical application is the Ascend a robotic knee orthosis for those who suffer from osteoarthritis. We think it can probably help with other knee ailments as well, but the data is pending. Powered by the same pneumatic system, this device encapsulates more of the leg than the Forge device and provides more offloading of the joint and can be used unilaterally on just the affected leg, whereas the Forge is attached to both legs. In a recent study, impressively, it was found that pain scores decreased by 46%, and 67% of participants saw improvement in daily function. The first 100 units are being shipped this year, with a price tag coming in at under 10k USD, which is actually quite low for robotic exoskeleton devices. It could provide a great option for patients considering surgery and trying to increase ambulation. Mark, any thoughts? Yeah, well, I think this is really, really interesting. With the Ascend, what pops into my mind is how useful that would be, like you were saying, for people that are considering surgery. I know a few years ago, my aunt had to get a knee replacement Mm -hmm. and it took almost two, two and a half years Mm -hmm. from when she needed that surgery till she actually got it and was in so much pain throughout that time. So if there was a device that could alleviate that while giving the same amount of mobility she didn't have to compromise on i know that would be totally really, and really you, you bring awesome. up i think you bring up the really important point that a lot of the language you use around devices and um medicine often misses out that really important point which is that 
pain is often the limiting factor when it comes to moving around and um, doing our daily tasks. And that is probably the most important thing to a person's general health. So thanks for bringing that up. Absolutely. Also, uh, definitely check out the video. Speaking of pain, Mm -hmm. um, the video by Forge, we've posted the link down below. And there's a point where he jumps off of a Oh yeah, 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 yeah. A few feet in the air yeah, yeah. with a bunch of weight on his back and goes right into a squat and it makes me cringe <laughs> just from experiencing knee pain in the past yeah. definitely yeah, yeah. check it out it really highlights how impressive this thing yeah is. and that's going to be in the links to the in our episodes just go take a look that'll take you to wired's youtube video amazing so i'm gonna hop into another exciting topic here i want to share today a really fascinating piece of tech. It has the potential to provide upper limb prosthetic users with some added dexterity in their prosthetic hand. Of course, I am talking about haptic feedback delivering mechanosensation to prosthetic users. Currently being developed by Moad Abed and colleagues from the Florida Atlantic University, this tech is adding a huge missing piece to sophisticated bionic limbs, the sense of touch. So first of all, what is haptic feedback? So a device with haptic feedback is essentially a device that can give a user information through the application of force or vibration. If you've ever used a video game controller that can vibrate at certain times throughout a game to communicate something happening in the game, then you're familiar with haptic feedback. Another important concept is also mechanosensation which is an aspect of our sense of touch. Essentially, receptors in our skin can relay signals of force, pressure, vibration from things that come in contact with us. This allows us in part to better manipulate objects in complex ways. Now, why is this important for prosthetic users? Well, it's important for all animals that want to manipulate objects. One major barrier in current bionic limb tech is the fact that user's dexterity is still far off from an organic limb. The reason being is that we need feedback from our limbs to be able to plan and carry out actions. Without any feedback, prosthetic users need to be actively watching their hand if they want to, say, pick up a glass and place it beside them. And another major hurdle is actually controlling the amount of force that you grasp an object with. Without being able to know the force that you're using, you might not hold something strongly enough, or you might break it if you grab it without being able to compensate for force. So researchers at the Florida Atlantic University have come up with a solution for both these problems. By placing pads on the tips of the thumb, index, and pinky finger that can sense pressure, and relaying this information to a wristband that can apply pressure and vibration to the user's residuum, the user is now able to learn how much force is being applied to the objects that they're interacting with and adjust it accordingly. A beautiful feature is that they can differentiate between different fingers, which allows more complex objects to be handled in more complex ways. The hands are innervated through EMG muscle signals from the forearm, and the haptic feedback is delivered through the band on the residuum. It relays pressure information and will even vibrate if you end up breaking something, allowing you to know your own strength. In addition to approving dexterity, this tech has also let users actually interact and manipulate objects without needing to look at it, a skill that I think a lot of us take for granted. But I challenge you all to keep your eye on one of your hands every time you need to pick something up, put it down, interact with it, and you'll see how cumbersome it can be, then you will gain a new appreciation for this tech. It always boggles my mind about how much overlap there is in the uh, prosthetic field and the video game field. Like, especially like when you look at stuff like the Mayo armband started out as like a like video game slash um, presentation uh, remote uh, to now it's like controlling uh, prosthetic arms and like a device like this or 
um, technology like this, like haptic feedback, trying to get people to feel more immersed in video games. And now, oh, getting- absolutely. Well, and also, wasn't remember the the Xbox Connect? It oh, was yeah. used in labs. Oh yeah, all absolutely. Over the it was place like it, it did it sensing. did better as a lab research tool than it did as as a <laughs> gaming as a tool. Game. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I thought Just Dance was great. I don't. I think it was <laughs> equally as good as a gaming tool. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give fair, you that. Fair, fair. Okay, we'll be right back after this break. We really do need to pay our tuition. Wow. Weren't those some great ads? Did you know that only the top 20% most attractive people in the world can follow through? Try it for yourself. Balance. It's what keeps us on our feet. But as we get older, it tends to get more and more difficult for us to stay upright, which is where this next device comes in. Researchers at Keio University in Japan have been developing a wearable tail to help the elderly with their balance. This meter-long tail, named ARC, utilizes four pneumatic artificial muscles to articulate the tail in the opposite direction the body is leaning. The researchers believe that the tail can act like a counterbalance, shifting a person's center of gravity, giving the user a steadier stance. The design is an example of biomimicry, where it was heavily influenced by seahorse tails. The function of the device is actually like really clever. So just imagine that you have multiple square plates with four tubes running through the corners. As each of those tubes get inflated, the tail will then bend and shift in the opposite direction of the inflation. So by inflating the, those tubes in this way, and inflating either one or two, the tail can actually be shifted in eight different directions. That's giving it a lot of control, which the researchers believe will help people stay on their feet. Uh, They also found that the tail needs to be at the very least 5% of a person's body weight in order to influence their center of balance, which isn't really all that much when when you're thinking about it. And they're hoping to see other types of devices like this in the future soon. That's awesome. So I'm kind of imagining something like a big kangaroo tail. Well, uh, that's the wrong animal, but sure, you can imagine well, that if you like. Seahorses? Do seahorses have pockets? Seahorses, seahorses do have pockets. Oh, the male seahorses carry the babies, so they do have a pouch. Yeah, it's- Ocean kangaroos. 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 Mm-hmm. See, I wasn't far off. Thank you, Mark, for making that connection yes. right there it's really hard to tip over a seahorse it is is this thing how how long how long generally are these so it's about a meter long Whoa, uh, when it's like meter. fully fully extended and so out. you were saying that there's little segments how long are each segment i'm just trying to get an idea of you know if it's more of a gross limb or if you're able to like wrap it around yourself or oh no so it's uh you could not you could not wrap it around uh yourself so it attaches around a person's waist and kind of at the middle uh and the tail comes out at the middle of their lower back yeah that's the image the image you shared with me was like that's why i was thinking of a kangaroo looks very similar yeah Yeah. right yeah when it's not outstretched it does look very similar to a kangaroo I think it's really interesting. It could be, I wonder if someone who has like, other than the elderly, someone who just has motor deficits or a neurological issue where they sometimes have difficulty with balance, it could be sort of something that they could just wear. Yeah. If you had affected postural Mm. muscles, like muscles, that would, you could see that being really useful. Yeah. Very cool topics, boys. So what are we thinking? Very, very cool. Mark, what do you think of the other two topics? I thought they were both really fascinating. Um, I think my favorite is mine. Wait, am I allowed to choose mine as my favorite? I mean, that's generally not we okay. Set the rules. That, that's <laughs> sort of, that's okay. considered bad sportsmanship. Uh, it's a bit biased. That's, that's biased. But let's say other than yours. I... Other than mine, I really like the tail. Yeah. 
I think what it needs is a form of something that can grasp because when I see tail, I just think of climbing trees. Wonderful. So you're just trying to get us to be monkeys again. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you want a prehensile tail. All right. Fair enough. Owen, what'd you think of the other two topics other than your own? Yeah, no, I really liked it. I'm very excited to see what superheroes come out of robotic knee braces. Fair enough. Uh, though I think that my fa- my personal favorite was Mark's topic, as anything that gets to me to talk about my passion of just dance uh, is very important to me. This is true. Uh, this is fair. Yeah, as as you both know, I, I you I, dance I, a lot. This, this is all I do. This is all you do. Is, is I come home. I've just seen dance. your moves. Yes, I've yeah. seen yeah. Owen's. Owen's a great dancer. Sleep. Uh, yeah, personally, um, it's, it's a toss up. I think for me, it has to be the haptic one because, um, I've always been interested in bionic arms and, you know, the Holy grail is building in that sense of, um, you know, feedback and touch and making it feel Getting like it actually, sensation. right. Make it, could you define somatic sensation for our listeners? Cause you had to define it for me. Somatic sensation is just the, is the overarching term for, our our senses right basically to keep it simple for gotcha and so that it's a holy grail to make an arm really integrate into the human body is that you can actually feel it move it can feel things you can have that sense of pressure and that's always going to be that final goal so listeners what was your favorite topic today let us know on our instagram it's enabling motion pod on instagram comment dm us whatever we'd love to hear what you enjoyed most or let us know any other cool topics you've heard about thank you for joining us on our first ever episode thank you to the pod buyer network for supporting us we're very very excited to be here and we are so honored that you have joined us today we'll have new episodes for you every other tuesday everywhere you find podcasts thanks so much for joining us everyone and we will be excited to talk to you more on our next episode Take care, everyone.